details on that and go to another result. All right. What am I showing here? This is my election I card, and I'm not going to show a close-up because I don't want you to see more details. But what you see here is a lamination around it, and uh, everyone's done it. They get your, they get things laminated. But what they don't know that the world's biggest producer of lamination films is sitting right next to me, Pankaj Poddar, um, CEO of Cosmo Films. Thank you so much for joining us. Um, not the greatest quarter, I'll have to say, but uh, I understand that when you do dramatic improvements in business, it becomes a little disappointing for the markets when you don't deliver that. But there's been a top line drop and your profits are flat. What happened? Yeah, so actually the results are not really so bad as it is looking like. Right. First of all, if you really look at volumes, uh, it, the number is showing 6% down. Mm. But if you really see from corresponding quarter of last year, mm. uh, the polypropylene prices are down by roughly 20%, mm. which is almost 12% impact on our sales because, uh, you know, polypropylene prices is completely passed on to customers. Okay. Uh, second thing is that we have been able to have a 6% volume growth, which is quite phenomenal given the fact that all this growth is coming from uh, efficiency gains because we are pretty much fully utilized on our lines. Mm. And this is in spite of the fact that a couple of lines we had to take shut down last quarter mm. because uh, some of the lines we were converting from electrical heating to coal uh, coal uh, related heating mm. and we also are trying and to why is that is it cheaper now to do coal it's much cheaper than the electricity mm. Um, mm. you know electricity in the earlier days when it was too cheap two rupee a unit in those mm. days it made sense mm. but now that electricity is six to seven rupees therefore mm. uh, coal related heating is uh, much more cheaper yeah, that's bad news for power companies i, I hope they <laughs> Hearing what Pankaj Botha is hearing here, but go ahead. Yeah, and mm. uh, the other thing is that uh, we also have been able to, uh, you know, we, we are also trying to increase speed of some lines, so we had to take some shutdowns of uh, that as well. Mm. So in spite of those reasons, we had good 6% uh, growth in uh, volumes, yeah, mm. you know, which we feel is quite good. Mm. Uh, the other thing is that last year, if you really recall, some of the polypropylene companies had to take a shutdown for their maintenance, and mm. therefore there was a you know, small, uh, some kind of a shortage in polypropylene, and mm. therefore the polypropylene prices were higher by 20 rupees. Mm. Not just that, we were also able to take little yeah, higher uh, yeah. margins on that. Mm. And that had an impact of roughly 2.5% from last year. Mm. And that has been completely compensated by the growth that we had in specialty sales, which mm. has grown by roughly 13% this time. Mm. And therefore, from a sales pricing perspective, from uh, you know, we have been able to replace commodity with a specialty film. Mm. And therefore, that 2.5% is compensated. So mm. I think it's, it's good, but obviously on papers, it's looking a little different. Well, yeah. to be fair, I guess there's a limit beyond which you cannot grow because yeah. You already, you were telling me working at 100% capacity, right? Yeah. I mean, you really cannot increase your top line yeah. beyond a point unless pricing goes up sharply. Yeah. So what are you doing about that? Yeah, so there are basically two plans. One is that we are continuously foc on, focusing on specialities. Mm. Specialities typically give you a sales growth. So what would well. that be? Uh, so last quarter... I, I mentioned laminates, right? The yeah. lamination film. Yeah. Uh, there's something called BOPP. Is that, does that produce lamination as well or is that uh, it's, uh, it's something different? Yeah, so BOPP is the very base of everything that okay. we do. Mm. And then we do a lot of value additions, you know, mm. in the form of coatings and, mm. uh, you know, there's a lot of chemistry behind it. Mm. Mm. Then uh, we do extrusion. So BOPP is essentially the, uh, the polymer which is, becomes transparent. Yeah, it's you basically can, a can... transparent polypropylene polymer okay. and we convert it into a film. Mm. Then we can change the nature of the film either on the line itself mm. by, you know, either changing the process mm. or changing the raw material to it. Mm. But once, even if you have taken out a polypropylene film from a line, you can mm. also do a lot of value adds either in terms of spatial metallization, uh, coatings on it, extrusion coatings on it, or a combination of all these. Mm. So Give me an example. What what would I be using? Or I, I just showed our viewers the laminated uh, election yeah. card. Yeah. What would I be buying? Yeah. On a daily basis, which is a specialty produced by you. Yeah. So one, as you rightly pointed out, thermal is one of these specialties. Mm. And uh, in thermal, basically what we do is it's a very thin film, mm. and then we put a special adhesive on it so mm. that the laminator doesn't have to put the cold adhesive uh, during that process. Okay. Their labor reduces. It's mm. a much uh, cleaner process for mm. them. Mm. And the other thing is the beauty of the, uh, you know, the whole book looks much better, not mm. just books, the posters and a lot of this thing. Mm. But within the lamination film, you know, we have been continuously innovating. So we had come out with velvet film earlier. We had come out with scuff mat film earlier. What's a velvet film? Uh, velvet where is... Would, our viewers have seen something like that. Yeah, so velvet is an excellent product and speaking up very nicely in Indian market. Mm. Mm. Uh, and it has very uh, wide applications in lamination. Mm. So until now, you know, velvet basically means a velvet cloth. Yeah, yeah. We wanted to give the same touch and feel right. on a film. 
Oh. So what we exactly did is we did some special coatings on it mm. to have a velvet finish uh, on a film, mm. and therefore if you have that velvet finish on any surface, it feels it could actually be your product and not a real cloth velvet. Exactly. exactly. Okay, that's very interesting because yeah. it's possible that people have bought things which they think are cloth velvet, but actually uh, is uh, a polyprint exactly. pharma. Exactly. Okay, all right. And also to mention, in last quarter, like we had three uh, new products. Mm. One is the cement bag. You know, if you really see cement bag is uh, suffering a lot of issues in terms of. Cement bags are not nicely printed. Mm. It's very difficult to have any brand identity on them. Mm. There's a lot of uh, dust coming out of the cement mm. bag mm. because uh, they are not uh, uh, dust, uh, I would say, completely resistant from mm. dust coming out mm. of it. And third is whenever there's rain, there's a lot of cement which gets wasted in India because they're not moisture-proof bags. Mm. Mm. We've actually found a solution for all three mm. where these bags are uh, and no this dust is coming out. Solution. This yeah, is a proprietary one. solution. This we have mm. uh, done along with our converters. Mm. And this has picked up already three, four brands in India have... Uh, uh, you know, started to use it. Mm. Uh, initially, they had challenge that cost is going up marginally. Mm. But what they realized is that the reduction in wastage of cement mm. and the brand uh, visibility mm. that they get is, is mm. far superior to what we. What and these have you there. sell directly to the cement manufacturers, or it goes via. Uh, so we are trying to uh, touch base with the cement industry also, but mm. most of it goes to a converter mm. because, because converter, what they do is they make the basic right. polypropylene uh -huh. bag, mm -hmm. they laminate it with our film mm. and, uh, you know, they print it and then laminate with the, uh, with the bag that they had mm. and then give it to the cement industry and cement mm. industry then fills it. Mm. So our customer is actually the, uh, the converter, but most mm. of these converters, I mean, I would say many of these converters are not so big mm. and therefore we also play a large role in terms of making sure that there's a three party mm. interaction. Action. And in case there is any kind of issue that the cement industry faces, then we are there to help them out mm. and explain them that why it is more beneficial for it. So it's a basically a three-party kind of a mm. interaction between cement industry, converter, and Cosmo Films. Okay, the, when it comes to those specialty films that you're talking yeah. about, you were telling me in the break that uh, many biscuit packets and uh, packaging, that is also comes under specialty or is that uh, the base itself? Yes, yeah, so the basic, uh, you know, the chips or biscuits or ice creams is commodity film, but mm. we have recently again come out with a film, mm. a, a metalized film, mm -hmm. where we have improved three features. Mm. First thing is it can really print very, very fast. Mm. So let's say if earlier, if you are able to do 400 packets, this new film can do 600 packets, so mm. much more. Mm. Second thing is we have been able to improve the seal strength of the packet. Okay. So earlier... Uh, mm. Let's say the seal strength was 500 grams. Now we have increased it to 900 grams and we are trying to increase it to one and a half kgs. Mm -hmm. And third thing that uh, we have done is also to improve the shelf life mm -hmm. of the product by okay. improving the uh, barrier properties yeah, that, of the film. Right. Mm. So three things done together. Already a mm. couple of brands have again started taking it, which again we have recently launched. Mm. We have not just done it in BOPP. CPP mm. is another product that we had recently introduced. Mm. These are different lines mm. than BOPP. Mm. But again, the raw material is polypropylene. Mm. So we have done it very recently on CPP also. So both are very good products mm. and uh, goes into the speciality category. And the, the expansion that you're taking place, you were saying it's a brown yeah. field expansion. Yeah. Uh, is that essentially that expansion is for specialty fit or is it just for the base product itself? Yes, so typically what we do is the new line is actually a very high tonnage line. Okay. So what we are going to do is to shift our commodity uh, mm. products to the new line because mm. that is a far more efficient line. Mm. Uh, the cost, uh, the variable cost from that line should be at least uh, two rupee kilo lower okay. uh, when the processing cost of a film is hardly, you know, uh, mm. so it, it's a very big reduction from mm. that perspective. Mm. So and will you pass on a part of that or you're not going to do that immediately? Uh, see, it depends on the market dynamics. Right. You know, yeah. so, mm -hmm. I mean, as a company, mm -hmm. why would I like to do that? Mm -hmm. yeah, uh, exactly. You know, mm -hmm. uh, but, mm -hmm. but let's see. I mean, mm -hmm. uh, ho hopefully not because it's mm -hmm. not just me because most of the other capacities or let's say every other capacity in the market is actually uh, the lines which cannot produce like this. Okay. So, therefore, so you have a sense of... Uh, so we have that advantage. So ideally, uh, you know, it doesn't make sense to, uh, you know, uh, neither the converter should ask for it. So basically what we are looking at is shifting the commodity on that line mm. and have all other lines uh, dedicated more and more towards speciality. Mm. In any case, our focus is to decommoditize the business, mm. move more and more towards speciality. Mm. Day one, obviously, everything cannot be converted into right. speciality. It's a, a, a phased process. But I think a 13% growth in speciality mm. in one quarter, I would say, is, is uh, quite good for us. So one final question. We're out of time. Should we expect a slight uh, drop in net margins because you're going to invest, there's going to be some in depreciation, I'm assuming slightly higher interest costs. So while EBITDA margins might go up, net margins, should we expect a slight drop? 
See, if you if you're talking about percentage in our mm. industry, it doesn't make too much of sense. Okay. Because of the fact that uh, a lot of it is driven by polypropylene prices, prices which are completely okay. passed on to customers. Mm. But if you talk about absolute margins and absolute numbers, mm. they should grow significantly. In our industry, we talk per kilo. Okay. And those should significantly go up because mm. the new line is more efficient. Mm. Our specialty content is going up. Yeah. And uh, the overall volume growth will be almost like uh, 30 to 40 percent. So I think all through uh, three things looks very positive. All right, Pankaj Bhatta, thank you so much for coming in. And and hope to see you again next quarter with uh, happier news to give us. Thanks sure. a lot. Thank you. We have to uh, take a very short break right now. And coming up.